have the OG Spyro 1 Sparksless 120 race between Toaster and New Year, commentated by Hameldon. I'm here to intro you because, unfortunately, Tooper's holding his laundry. But I'll leave it to the commentators to get this rolling, and we'll get this 120 race underway. That was great. You did a great job. Hey guys, this is Hum. Um, so, I used to play this game. <laughs> I might still play it again sometime soon, but I am commentating this event, or not the event, the run itself. I could comment the whole, commentate the whole event, but uh, we're already like halfway through it, so I guess I already fell through on that one. I have Toaster and New Yar here, uh, who are going to be doing Sparkless 120%, which is a really cool category. Uh, basically, uh, you guys know Sparks at this point. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a code to remove sparks entirely. So this introduces a couple issues. The big things that we're going to be looking for are um, we have to collect all gems manually. And if we get hit by anything, then we lose a life. Um, so a lot of damage boosts or damage abuses to get things quickly. We can't do in this, so we have to improvise. Um, I'm really excited to see uh, what these two are going to do for this, so uh, I want to give them a chance to intro themselves as well. So go ahead, guys. Uh, I'm Zando Toaster. I'm. I think I was the first one to do a run of this, uh, and I pushed it pretty far. You did. Yeah. <laughs> no. um, yeah. Just a little perspective, actually, before we start. Um, you guys might be familiar with like where the time for a really good 120% time is. It's usually in the low 130s to sub 130. Uh, Toaster has the record in this category with a 139, and that's without sparks the entire run. And he's running on slow disk speed, so loads are longer. And he doesn't have any advantage for skipping credits in his run as well. So compile all that together, and you're looking at like a what a 136. Yeah, like a 135, something like that. Or a 135 effort, which is amazing. Uh, but yeah, uh, New, uh, give it, if you want to say anything before we start. Um, Hello, I'm Noya, Nuya, Nuja, whatever. I've uh, like many names in this community, and I'm mainly running Spyro 1, 120%. Um, and I decided to switch to 120 Sparksless, as it was pretty entertaining. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to this, I can definitely say. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm excited too. So um, I'll probably give you guys a three, two, one, go. So you guys will start on go. Is that okay? Sounds good. All right, uh, are you guys ready to start? Yes, indeed. Cool. All right, three, two, one, go. Oh, and for information, yes, I am on emulator. Yes, uh, so both of our runners are, I think Toaster's on a PS1, or are you just running on a PS2 with slow disk speed? I, I am on a PS1 console. Uh, it, it's one of the older models that has like a bunch of extra ports in the back, and I oh, have an action replay device plugged into one of them. Oh, so good. <laughs> Yeah, so this isn't a built-in code, as you guys um, probably would expect. This is using, um, basically changing RAM values. Um, so you either have to use an emulator or use a Game Shark or Action Replay or other, um, you know, third-party applications to be able to do this on a console. Um, and it's just tweaking a little setting to basically say, Sparks is gone. If we get fodder, Sparks is never coming back. He just doesn't exist for this run. Um, and... Oh, I got through the first big hurdle. Yeah, I, I was... Open <laughs> sunny flight without drowning. <laughs> I was going to say that, yeah. yeah um, it, the, the issues with Sparksless present themselves very quickly in this run. Uh, as you see, um, you have these stones that you have to step on to get sunny flight open. And if you've seen any 120% at any point, uh, you might be familiar with... Um, seeing runners dip into that pool once or twice while they're stepping on those stones as quickly as possible. That's not too big of a deal on an actual 120% run, but in this, you die and you have to go back there. So uh, you're playing with danger right at the start already. I 
actually this stream is super laggy on this, so I'm actually just gonna watch the mainstream. <laughs> Fair. I was watching a, a slideshow of you guys. <laughs> uh, sunny flight and basically all flight levels are going to be, you know, your bread and butter. There's not anything different here that you're going to be experiencing. So yeah, we started off with a bang, but for this flight level, if you've seen it once, you've seen it a million times. You know what's uh, going thing, on here. One thing I'll point out, Noi, I believe you're going to be doing the Toasty Wall Glide route, right? Uh, indeed. Toasty Wall Glide okay, so... with Dark Hollow Out of Bounds. So yeah, oh, we're okay. doing pretty different Artisan's routes, because I'm not doing that. I don't normally do the Toasty Wall Glide. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I guess I'll speak on that a little bit, because I have, I think I'm... Yeah, Phoenix, if you can get me those, um, just like DM me and... Uh... We can take care of that real quick. Uh, I don't have the links off the top of my head. Uh, but yeah, we can talk about this a little bit. So I think I'm still second on the leaderboard for this. And you are. OK. Uh, and when I first started running this, I think it was probably around January or so. Um, I was just doing the regular 120% route, which has this toasty wall glide, and it has the dark hollow out of bounds. Uh, and then I had it mentioned to me that maybe doing the other route or at least um, adjusting my route could be a little faster. I don't know if the jury, you know, where the where that stands right now, um, but with these big green guys in Dark Hollow, uh, their gem hides within them for like their entire death animation. So you have to either wait it out or uh, plan your route accordingly. And I think I found that uh, going the route that you see Toaster going on allows you to just take care of them and then grab the gems on the way back. Um, so uh, that's uh, another thing I want to point out real quick before I get to it is uh, some people may be familiar with the lamp hop route. I'm going to be going for lamp hop until I get it just to show off that route. Let's go. It's awesome. <laughs> I, I usually get it in the first two or three tries. So Yeah. Yeah, this is a the really cool thing about this category is oh, I was just beautiful. talking about how a route's going to be different from or like how one might be slightly faster than the other. But there's a lot more risk and reward play with like how you t um, like do risky things throughout the run. So like if you're willing to try and do something, even though you might get smacked or or just sideswiped and you might die, um, those things are going to add up a lot more than these small time saves, at least in the current state <laughs> of the category. Um, so um, there might be some big switches back and forth throughout this run, which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's Okay, lamp hop is not going well, but I'm still going to keep going for it. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. Hell yeah. So if that you get this first one. try, I think it saves like five seconds compared to the normal route. In normal cool. 120, it only saves like two, but it saves more in Sparksless. Mm. And it's just really cool. It is very cool. Indeed is. But too cool for me. <laughs> okay, Han pointed out that um, there might be some changes regarding the leech. Just because of how um, much risk you have, you have to take in like the later levels. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah. <laughs> which, is, yeah. which is also a very, very big factor in, in Sparksless. Um, like the most important thing is that you have to get some kind of consistency into into your runs, especially into, into your late game, because there are some levels with enemies who are very, very difficult to get through without getting damage. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, there, I, and I'll try, or you guys might even as well, just point out these moments where, like, in a 120, and just a regular 120 run, you don't think much about it, but um, you give yourself the first couple, you know, Sparksless 120 runs, and you really start to fear a couple things that you didn't fear Actually, before. Actually, I'm, I'm heading into one of those. All I was going to... And toasty yes. are horrible. <laughs> yes. That one almost yeah. killed me. Toasty uh, is, gets very tough, and there's a lot of good opportunities here for some risk, uh, risk play with um, getting the dogs and, you know, having them jump off the edge or getting them with the quick kills, as you are seeing Toaster do. Um, you can do that, but you are running the risk of just getting hit by a single one and being set back 10, 15, 20, however many seconds it ends up being. Um, definitely a tough, tough level right at the start. 
For people who haven't seen the Vanishing Dogs before, basically, if you fling the dogs at the top of their jump, uh, they kind of do a second jump, which sends them far enough away from their home point that it just kills them and gives you the gem. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was trying to think uh, back to like the last uh, Spirothon. I don't know how prevalent they were in the meta, but like they're more common now. People have kind of understood them. Uh, yeah. where people have routed out and planned out these these uh, quick kills on the dogs, which adds up to a lot of time in both categories. And this one, it also helps too, because the gem, it's one of the few chances you have for a gem to home in. So right. take those advantage when you can. Like in PAL, you have the, um, your, the gems from the dog automatically home in, which is uh, quite weird. And I tried it out to banish the dogs on PAL. The result is that they just disappear. You have to re-enter the level, like leave and re-enter to grab them. It's yeah, quite it's an interesting weird. fact. And I wonder if them, uh, like the fact that the jumps disappear when vanishing the dogs in hell might have something to do with uh, the developers changing uh, the way the gems behave. Like the gems from the dogs behave. Mm. They changed it in NTSC in the NTSC version. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, so that's something. Oh, one one thing. Uh this thief in Stone Hill is actually surprisingly hard to get sparksless. If you take too long getting those two loose red gems before it, the thief will just take off. Yes. So you need to <laughs> take a yeah. good line on those gems. Yep. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, this category, you really get a good feel for these micro movements uh, because you have to collect a lot of these gems that are just sitting on the ground as quickly as possible. And I, I, by the time I got the time that I did in this category, I felt much more confident in just grabbing gems with these little adjustments throughout because there's a lot that you rely on sparks on. People talk about sparks in this cat or in this game being bad. But you go to appreciate him a little bit after running this. I did a normal 120 run after I got my final Sparksless PB, and I, I felt like I was cheating. <laughs> Sparks just made everything so easy. Yeah. Because it feels so different, you can take way more risks without um, the fear of any punishment from the game. Yeah. There are some things that I was still never sure how to best route, like this big open room in Stone Hill. I'm not convinced that what I'm doing is the fastest, but I couldn't figure out anything faster. I don't know, there are a lot of small areas of routing like that that I'm just not sure about still. Yeah, I think I pretty much did what you did. Um, because the gems kind of lend themselves to doing those little mini loops that you were doing. Yeah to like circle back or whatever, but it still feels slow. <laughs> uh, another thing, another thing I want to point out real quick is just uh, any gem fountain stuff, trying to collect those gems as best you can. That's a fun thing to watch out for in this run, because every yep. fountain has the gems pop out in a different way. Yep, and... if, you're, if you're good about it, and not all of the fountains, I think, are going to let you do this, but if you can get above it, and collect them as soon as they're able to be collected. You can kind of have them mostly all collect while you're just hovering above the fountain itself. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's there's a lot of finesse to it all. <laughs> there are some uh, of those gem fountains which are easier to collect. For example, the key chest, the fountain of the key chest in Peacekeeper's Homeworld. Relatively easy to uh, get all the gems before they land on the ground. I missed a gem. Okay. Just... I need to see both of you guys at Town Square. <laughs> Do you know what the gem was? Um, I unfortunately don't. 
I wish I saw it. Is it two gems somewhere? I'm trying to think. Yeah. Check all the bowls, I would imagine. Yeah, it was the bowl at the big fountain. Yeah. Okay, okay that's what he said. Thanks, Wally. <laughs> oh, I'm also gonna grab this life in Town Square, uh, just because it's really easy to run out of lives in this category. Mm hmm Indeed. I guess yeah, I, I would... Go ahead. It is considered a success if you have a Sparks' run without getting game over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's very easy for deaths to quickly spiral out. You'll be doing fine for a little bit. Take a death, and then you'll try to get to that place quickly, and you'll take another death on the way there or something like that. So um, it can be easy to go from, say, two, three lives down to nothing. Especially, like, keep an eye out for Misty Bog. Hopefully these guys do a good job, but it can get pretty rough over there. Yeah, I, I had one run that I ended up... A partial run I ended up putting on YouTube was... Uh, one of the best early games I ever ended up having, followed by, I think it was six deaths in a row at the start of High Caves. Oh. Which which completely killed it. It just, it can happen basically anywhere. Yeah. yeah high Caves, High Caves can be one that you can just get nicked really easily by just about every enemy. That will also tend to have big problems with his uh, terrace, with the uh, electrocuting enemies. Yeah, which mm -hmm. is tend, is tend to hit once, which of course is not a problem in a normal 120 run, but mm -hmm. in Sparks' 120 it's uh, it's a very big issue, since you basically have to restart again. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Well, this wasn't a bad art since. I don't have a timer up. What are you looking at? I'm just looking at the stream time. Oh, sorry. I, I meant like, that... what's the what is the time that you were looking oh, at? I, I think that was like a. Oh yeah, that's not bad. Like a 13:30, given yeah. I spent like 10 plus seconds on lamp hop. Yeah, that was impressive. Yeah, I think for I think for all three of us here, I think there's a general feeling or vibe that um, when we're running this category, our goal is to try and bop as many people on the main leaderboard as we can. Absolutely. Um, it's Indeed. just very rewarding. You feel it <laughs> like, oh man, I can do this so fast. However, if you if you get if you get some kind of consistency, especially in the late game, I have to say that Sparks is not as important for getting a somewhat decent time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've been surprised by that. Mm-hmm. I, I suspect this is also going to be true of Spyro 2 and Spyro 3 Sparks list, but for Spyro 1, this ends up just being really similar to 120% with a few minor changes, once you're good at it. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Um... Yeah, uh, there's definitely like the initial risk uh, or like that, that feeling of like danger. <laughs> like this is this is scary. But once you get a feel for it and you know kind of those little scary spots, what to expect. And that's kind of the same way with regular 120%. Because once you know what to expect, you do so much better. Right. Um, and I, I yeah. when I talk to people about learning 120%, it's really just like learning what your options are and what to expect in an area. And then you'll be able to pull off things way more because this game's not really much about tricks and that kind of extends to this category as well even more so i would say yeah uh, i'm gonna go for a wall glide that very likely nice. might kill me. but it's cool so i'm doing it See, go Zando, go Zando. don't spoil me don't spoil me i'm like a little bit behind you That's got to be it. That's good. So now you're going to get this little area here, and then you're going to accidentally lose your jump or charging jump here. Oh, heck afterwards. yeah. Just dip right off. <laughs> oh, I forget if I've shown it, but I'm going to just flame a few fodders here to point out that even if you get them, Sparks doesn't come back. Just to really emphasize that. 
you'll hear the animation and I think you'll see the the butterflies for a frame and then they just go away. Because yeah. the thing is, yeah. um, if you're sparksless in the regular game um, and you get a fodder, I think the butterfly shows up for a frame and then it just turns into sparks. So that right. just doesn't happen. Okay, that was, that was very close. Let's go. <laughs> nice. So they both got the wall glide there. That's uh, That saves two seconds as opposed to going the um, intended path over there. And really cool. Um, it's something that's more commonly seen in uh, slower times in the main category because you have that buffer of having sparks. You can recover it. With this, if they were to flop on that wall glide at any point, uh, it's very, very difficult to actually recover that and get over there without taking a death. On the plus side, they had a dragon right there, so it's not too much of a time loss. So they both went for it. It's a stretch, which is less risky. Mm -hmm. Luckily. Okay, coming to Greg Canyon, uh, there will be some fireworks chests, which also uh, points out one of the differences you you have in Sparks as compared to normal 120. You cannot do any damage abuses. Yep. For example, bonking on fireworks chests, so they explode faster, doesn't work here. Um, the lofty damage abuse you do to get on the fireworks uh, chest platform doesn't work either. Were you guys uh, good about avoiding those things when you first started running this category, or were there a couple mistakes? Where you just charge into it, not it's thinking? Pretty good about it. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Pretty good as well. Um, I had problems in Lofty where I first came into this level and just rem uh, remembered, wait, I can't do the damage piece. I oh. have to figure out a route real quick. <laughs> really cool um, uh, triple spring chest star strat there by Toaster. Um, basically, he flamed the first two so that they popped up at about the same time. Charged, or I think he charged into those, and then, um, or is it flame charge? Flame charge into those or something. And doing that uh, allows you to bonk into the last one, but also grab it at the same time. Just a really cool optimization. I think that's Wally's. I think I did it the Wally way. I oh, think. okay. Uh, so uh, I them. usually try to flame all three of them and glide across them, but when I saw I didn't. Oh, really? I adjusted to Wally's way. Wally's way is faster. I just, yeah. I'm bad at it. I don't usually get it. I actually didn't know that. I, I never really tried because it felt slow. Um, but yeah, I didn't know you could get all three. That's cool. Yeah, so you'll see a lot of that, and that transfers between Sparks and regular 120 is the spring chess. Um, just trying to get doubles. That was something that I think wasn't really paid much attention to until like maybe the last couple years is uh, you can really optimize a lot of those. Um, particularly, I think Dark Passage is a really good one for it, uh, where there's just so many that you can get into with one flame as opposed to flaming each individually. Cool stuff. That was a nice set of gems right there for that fireworks chest on news side. Just like regular 120, there's not a ton of RNG, except for like where gems fall. Um, so it kind of is more beneficial in this category because you have to collect them manually. Um, but I think for most part, both these guys just know how to manage most situations. You just get a little bit of advantage if the gems fall on the right spot. Yeah. The main reason I like 120 because there's not much RNG at all. Mm -hmm. Just like mostly be reliant on the um, skill of the player. Another thing I mentioned uh, a little bit before in Dark Hollow is uh, that some enemies, they can't be flame charged, which if you're not familiar with flame charging, it's just flaming and then charging at just the right time and distance between an enemy uh, so that the gem homes in instead of popping up in the air. Um, we try to use that as much as we can in this category because it's faster. 
but not all enemies are going to allow us to do that. And a big thing to keep an eye out for this category is uh, is if an enemy's death animation kind of occludes the gem and you can't get to it, um, either finding a way to avoid that by either flaming them into a spot where they're away from the gem and the gem's easier to collect, or um, adjusting your route accordingly so that you don't have to wait out that time. Uh, that comes up a few times. Not so much here, actually. The the, the mamas cooperate pretty well. Um, yeah, they're, they bounce back. a lot back. of space around them. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, their animation, we're actually lucky in the case that their animation has them go backwards while the gem is in front of them, so we can collect that easily. But uh, not always that lucky with some enemies. Um, sometimes you'll have an enemy and they'll just be laying there and you'll try to charge into the gem that's right beside it, but their hitbox will bump you out of the way. Little things like that. There is one certain mama in Shem, like the very last one, where you don't have, where you don't really have any space besides her, so the gem often just gets stuck in her hitbox until she um, disappears. Yeah, I have a strap for that one, but it's hard, and I'm not positive I'll get it. Yeah, actually, I think, um, I think there was like recently. Not, I don't want to say uncovered is the right word because it's probably been known about and just people haven't been doing it. But there are there is a way to manage that in both categories. Um, just the angle that you flame her in. Um, so maybe that's what you're referring to. Uh, probably. probably. I'm, I'm positive I had seen it before at some point. I just yeah. Only really started doing it for Sparksless. Gotcha. Yeah, I think it was. Um, somebody recently posted it on. I don't even know if it's the main Spyro Discord, but uh. They basically showed this and it was like, oh, yeah, why are we like waiting that fraction of a second when we can just do it this way? And it's probably faster for both categories. So I'll watch yeah. I'll watch yours and see if it's basically the same thing, because it's pretty intuitive. Um, it's not that's why like I don't want to say it was recently discovered because it seems like something that people would just kind of expect to do. Just not many people were doing it. Right. Oh, I messed up real bad. The idea is you just flame aimed at the right, and it pushes the mama way out of the way. Yep, yep, that's so, <laughs> and thank you, Steffi, and chat. Um, yeah, JX um, uh, was playing around with that, and I think he might have even just shared it on, like, Deo Man's Discord um, and said, like, has anybody tried this? And I think Deo and I both lost it, or at least I don't know if I typed it, but I was like, oh, wow, how wow, haven't I, why haven't I thought of that? Um, but yeah, just aiming or angling your flame uh, on her or on your left outwards um, will help you kind of get that gem where you want it to go. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, your also, animation doesn't have enough bounce back. I just want to point out with Shemp, this is a good example of gems that you can't collect all in the air. A lot of the bosses are this way, where you need to just learn which direction they fly out and uh, name accordingly. So like here, I wait for that gem. I missed it, but normally I wait for that gem to fly into me, and then I kind of go in a little loop and get the rest because I know where they land. Yep, that's a good strat. How about to Chimp MD, by the way? Oh yeah. <laughs> How about to Chimp MD? So yeah, I just wanted to point out real quick. Um, so they, the first two worlds aren't too scary when you first start running this category, except for Toasty. And, and I mean, that's at least how I feel about it. Ice Cavern is actually a little tough too. Um, but there's a lot more chances for just a little uh, tiny mistakes that end up causing a death in the next worlds leading forward. Um, so we could see some shakeups. We could see some interesting stuff. Or we could see some just really pro play. Um, I could totally expect seeing that too. Hey, that was a good gem collection on Ulrich. Very nice. I was wondering how you were going to tackle that. I have a strat I like doing for this window gem too. Oh, I missed it. I try to bonk into the window and have the recoil hit me into the gem. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Yep, 
Yep, doing little things. There's there's stuff like um, I saw you do it just a second ago, where there's two gems that are close to each other, but you couldn't just you know get one and then angle your analog stick while you're charging to the left, for example. Uh, you have to do what Toaster did, which is um, uh, do like a jump and then angle and then charge, because uh, that gives you a more sharp turn and allows you to collect that stuff easier. Um, definitely something that you would notice if you tried to do it yourself, um, trying to do some of the stuff that both these guys are doing here, um, where like they would try to, they would get these two gems easily where maybe it wouldn't work out so well if you were just holding down charge and pressing left or holding left or right. What, um... What I think is the most difficult part of Ice Cavern is uh, the magic stairs. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. You... Yeah. Because it's, it's doable, but, uh, yeah. It, it requires Easy just way more precision. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's way easier to fail and also easier to die because the stairs are on, on like, a void. Yep. I'll do that really cool thing where you try to adjust because you missed a gem or whatever, or you're like, you're trying to adjust so you can get all the gems and then you don't quite make it, you bonk, and then that bonk leads you into the abyss. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah, actually, I think I was saying that the first two worlds aren't so bad, bad but then I think Ice Cavern might be might be my worst level in my run. I can't remember though. It, it, it was my worst in the early game for a long time. There yeah. are a surprising amount of enemies that uh, can hit you if you're not careful. Mm. For me, it was Haunted Towers. Um, mm -hmm. like what I often did was, was dying while having the permanent flame, which just took you over big time. Yep. Oh yeah. It took me a very long, it took me a reasonably long time to Get the uh, take less. That spot okay. right there that was like a circle, sort of circle area with the two green gems that are close to the edge there that Toaster just did. That's uh, quite a bit harder just because it's real close to that edge and that edge can be a little finicky with it's like variant elevation. Um, so even in regular 120, uh, I've done it. I've seen other people do it where they don't take that edge quite right and then they just fall off to their death. But now you don't have sparks to help you get those gems, so you have to uh, risk it even more. Yeah. Nice. Uh, get your or what do you what do we call those jump charge I things? <laughs> Thingies. This is really nice though. You did good work with them. I think it's... Um, I love are... that speedrun tech where, not that in particular, but in general, when we all know what we're talking about, but we don't really have a term for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so how the slopes work in this game, uh, there are two approaches that you can basically do to it. If it's not too steep, you can hold uh, square and X and do what's called a skitter, um, and that just kind of does really rapid uh, sort of like jump or charging jumps up the thing itself just automatically uh, but if it's too steep it won't do that so you have to uh, do manual jump and charge while you're in the air and if you do that rapidly that's how you can get up a slope as fast as possible compared to just charging up it or uh, any other method essentially rolling up the, the slope it's going to be faster than that too uh, one thing I'll point out is a common way to get loose gems in this is to try to set yourself up so they're all in a line. So like here, I'll grab this gem and then get those three in a line. Yep. Yep. They don't have to stop charging. Yes. In order yep. to adjust for the gems. Do yourself as many favors. <laughs> Do your future self as many favors as possible. Exactly. <laughs> Alpine can be a pretty tough level. Yep. Yeah. It's a very cycle-based level. Um, 
outside of just the dangers of enemies, it's very cycle based. And if you get slowed down even a little bit trying to collect a gem, uh, the cycles are going to be slightly off from what you're normally expecting. So it can it can add up to some tough moments. Pick one of the harder parts of the run for me is the group of three blue wizards. Uh, shortly mm, after the first mm -hmm. dragon. Yep. Yeah, if you guys keep an eye out here in like just a few seconds, there's a pretty tough section. Oh, okay, good. Yep. There's plenty of moments where if you hesitate just a little bit that while you're trying to get one blue wizard, then the other one's like ready to go. So as you're about to flame them, they hit you. So you just basically trade blows, which isn't a problem in regular 120, but in this, you're set back. Um, my mistake was that I missed the first wizard before getting to the um, to the chest mm -hmm. on the left side, um, which caught me out of uh, which caught me off guard, oh, and yeah. I had to kind of Frankenstein something together, and it didn't work. Ooh, I liked that little move. <laughs> I saw you jump on that little pillar. No. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was good. <laughs> good stuff. I often vary it whether I jump to the left or to the right. Mm. Starting position. Uh, starting a position of the. Uh, of the obstacle. So I'm sitting at like eight lives right now, so I'm probably gonna stop taking extra ones, but this yeah. is hard enough that I'm not gonna promise I'll stop taking extra <laughs> ones. <laughs> well, if I was you, um, you. In the next world, there are several levels that have just like a couple quick ones. So you could just kind of play it by ear once you get there if you decide you want to grab one in like treetops or misty bog or something. Yeah, that's probably the way to do it. Yeah, Bog has two lives which are pretty much on the path. So collecting them loses a very low amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, treetops has, I think, four lives? If I'm not mistaken, just a bit out of uh, like the route, mm -hmm. but still, it's very good to have them at, at security. It's uh, it's probably what's... around that, yeah. Um, if you're considering some that are a tiny bit out of the way, um, if you have the need for them, yeah, I think you're you're probably right about there being about four. So very useful, especially at that point in the run where um, if things aren't going super well or didn't go super well on one level, you might need some of those. Well, since it's right after Misty. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <Indeed. laughs> However, Misty treats us. <laughs> I remember I'd have these good moments um, where I think it happened several times where I'd finish Metalhead. And I'd be just collecting gems just to finish up Beast Makers before moving on. And I'd fall in the swamp, like where the key is in Beast Makers. And that is actually yeah. pretty significant time loss. If you uh, uh, like have trouble doing the wall glide to get back over there, or if you decide to take the whole route back around to get to the end of Beast Makers, it's little stuff like that. I think that segment is actually the best example in my mind of parts of the game that get harder sparksless. Like yeah. surprisingly so. I've mm -hmm. had a lot of runs die after Metalhead before Dreamweavers. <laughs> I didn't get to see your climb, but I assume it went well based off of uh, your circumstances now. Up the uh, hill and hill, uh, high caves. Yeah, it was okay. I okay. missed one of the flame charges, but okay. I didn't die five or six times, so can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a plus on my side. Ah. 
Hey. Really cool strat there with um, getting a supercharge that isn't too fast so that you're able to supercharge into all of those fireworks chests. For high caves, I tend to get the three gems before the very first cave um, mm. first. That's because they make it they make it easier for when we have the like super plane. A good strat. Yeah, I, I did it that way for a long time. Yeah, it's uh, basically I don't want to say this is what everybody does in one twenty percent, but you guys are generally following the common high caves route. And with this super flame here that Toaster's getting, usually it's not too bad on regular like with sparks, uh, but it can be pretty close if you are doing it sparksless because you have to grab these gems manually. Um, so the the yeah, so you could see uh, sparks was or Spyro was flashing right as he was getting the last beetle there, and um, yeah, it's like one little bonk can really. I think you might be able to recover it with a single bonk, uh, but you're basically throwing your flame right at the end and trying to hit the beetle. Yeah. One day I just spent, like, several hours practicing just that section over and over again, so I'd stop losing runs there. Yeah, because <laughs> it sets you back quite a bit. You have to find some way to recover it, and nothing is really good. Um, right. Yeah. Like, you can basically just, like, continue onwards and um, then, like, go back and get the supercharge and get the beetles and all that stuff. It's just, like, a pain in the butt. So. Good stuff there. Nice. Oh, that was good. You like ended your supercharge right there um, on top of that. There's two 10 gems. So that just like was really smooth. Oh, a thing to, that you might not notice because uh, they're very good at managing it is if you flame the spring chest with a super flame, the gem just falls down, but there is a bit of delay until you can actually collect those gems. So if you're not used to it, you might do a flame and then charge into it earlier than you can. And then you've just charged past the spring chest. You haven't collected the gem and then you're already set back. You're probably not going to make the cycle. Yeah, that, that can be really rough. Yeah. You guys have gotten uh, good at that time, you know, you've kind of honed it in a little bit though, so I didn't see any, um, like, hesitation or anything with regards to those. Okay. Um, feeling a bit pressured now, like, all the guys are in the chat are staring at us. <laughs> they are! <laughs> Spooky. I would say generally, I don't see too much trouble with this level. I don't know how you guys feel. Um, was it peak? Yeah. I have to say it's one of the most difficult levels for me. Really? It is, yeah. Hmm. Mainly? I mean... Well, go on. Uh, mainly because of turnaround, I am quite new to turnaround. Um, okay. Uh, um, I used to do either was it proxy or used the wall guide as backup, gotcha. which of course is quite slow. Mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of problems with that. Um, additionally, the, the like second big island. Oh, sure. Yeah, like, yeah, they, like get, getting the right supercharge, I just sometimes. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I can have uh, One thing I want to point out real quick is the island with the thief on the back wall. Normally in 120, you'll see runners supercharge into uh, into that wall to get one or more of the gems behind mm -hmm. it. You can't do that in Sparks Plus, since yep. you don't have Spark to move yeah. behind and get those. <laughs> yeah, I think outside of the islands themselves and, you know, well, that's not so great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to that's well, maybe that's a blessing <laughs> in disguise. I don't know. <laughs> I don't regret it. Um, I would say that the two biggest scary spots in this level are some of the island movement 
um, just because there's a couple stray gems that are on tiny islands right here. Uh, they're not too bad. They kind of have some lines that you can follow. And then that uh, strong chest and two gems right there. Uh, because if you miss either the green or red, that's not too bad. But if you miss the strong chest trying to go for the green and red, then you have to find a way to get supercharged again. So um, that can be a little bit of a scary spot that isn't really too much of a concern at all on regular 120. There also is a wizard um, after the first supercharge. Ah, yep. Both um, on this like bigger platform. Um, where one of them, like the last one you get after the death abuse, the gem just sometimes does not home in when supercharging the wizard. Yeah. Yeah, I, Toaster, I don't know if you have anything to weigh in on that, but I thought it was like mm. something related to animation, like the their animation. I I don't know. I've not never sure. understood it. Oh, okay. <laughs> might be mixing up i think like we tried to dig into why it, maybe why it happens but really it's just expect that it might happen and then deal with it if it comes up yeah um, I, as you s you'll notice the route that i took i go through that wizard twice just to have two chances to get it yeah that's a pretty safe bet um what what new did was uh charged into it and then just bonked in the wall real quick that way if it didn't work which i don't think it did um you're right there and you can just grab the gem real quick and then you're back on the supercharge. Um, so you're really not set back that much. Um, or just, um, well, that's that's basically a pretty good backup. Um, so I'd like to see that. I want to be very honest. Bong was a mistake and the gem oh. did home in. Oh, it did home in? I thought I saw not, but I guess I'm wrong. No, you think you're probably right. The thief is being really nice there. No, um, <laughs> no, it didn't. I like didn't set you back too much, and actually you have, I don't know if it's a, a kind of a fortunate uh, situation where the wizard that's at the top is now at the bottom, so you can just take care of that real quick, and then the enemies here just automatically spawn. Oh, that was close. <laughs> yeah, the, the hitbox for that enemy builds almost yeah. cost me to die. Well, told you I was a peak as a... Uh... Problematic level for me. Yeah. I decided uh, to free Boldar for the fans. That wasn't a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm appreciation for. Boulder. Neither was that. No. Nope. <laughs> We're just gonna pay a visit to Boldar real quick, real quick, real quick again. Gonna so as you guys know, for luck, for luck. <laughs> <laughs> as you guys know, behind uh, with Crystal Flight, I don't know why I couldn't think of the name for a second there. Um, there are three red gems, and there are strats to handle. Um, moving the camera so that you can skip Boldar. Um, you guys might be familiar with Dragon Skip. I won't go too much into detail with that, but a problem with Sparksless is you have to manually collect the third red gem, so it can be a little harder to set up for that skip compared to regular 120. I should stop saying compared to regular 120 because it should just be implicit at this point, but I'll probably say it like a million more times. Oh, I kind of liked the way that you dealt with those fireworks gems. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I like that route. Just real simple. Uh, and then, yeah, that blue gem right there can be <laughs> problematic. Blowhard is mostly a really fun level in Sparksless, I think. Yeah. I think it's, it's a fun not... level in general. Yeah, it, it's oh, not indeed. too different from normal 120, and the differences, I think, are more fun than less fun. It is way more challenging. Um, across say. across uh, Sparks list 120 and any percent, uh, Blowhard is basically the same every in every single one. Um, so if you want to see a little bit of a different Blowhard, check out the last run in this marathon because the Vortex does some very different stuff. Indeed. I was going to make a joke about 
um, Vortex being an impromptu Sparksless Vortex. But um, I don't think that'd be interesting. Yeah, people it's... keep joking to me, Sparksless Vortex when, and I it's just Vortex, but with less options. Yeah, it really yeah. strips away the fun part of Vortex. <laughs> Uh, like, I think that I think Sparksless has it really shines in the category where you're trying to collect everything. Yeah. yeah, I think Sparksless any percent could be interesting just because maybe there are some different gems you would go for, but I don't know. Sure. I haven't done that. Yeah, yeah, I guess any percent is sort of like any percent in this category is more of like 120 percent mini. Um, so it's not like um, like I'm trying to think like a Sparksless or uh, any percent for Spyro 2. Like, that's that'd be dumb. But yeah. for this, it's kind of just a condensed version of 120% in a way. Um, so it might be interesting, actually. Routing, like, how you would route some of that stuff. Yeah, but Sparks' is Vortex, it basically just limits your options, and then the options you do have, they're just slightly scarier, but mostly just intended stuff. It's yeah. dumb. <laughs> Misty Bog would uh, would um, would yeah, it would be a little harder, <laughs> um, but not in a fun or entertaining way. Yeah, they're like it would just defeat the purpose of Vortex to just get to the end of the level as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. Which I don't mean to d distract from this too much now, but. I looked at the leaderboard for Vortex and it's up to like 72 runners or something like that. It's amazing. It, it grew thanks to a video a certain someone has made. <laughs> I don't know about that, but <laughs> but uh, but yeah, really cool. 73 actually, which is awesome. Um, I just love seeing. Yeah, I, um, I love to like seventh or something. It's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Goofy, a uh, big up and comer actually. He was in. He's a. He's a big runner in the Jack community. Um, came out of nowhere. Not nowhere, I shouldn't say that. But he's been doing it and third place now, which is just really cool. Yeah. The 421X uh, on the board. Is... Yeah, yep. And lots of uh, 22s now, which is just awesome to see. I think when I made the video, it was two. <laughs> so really good stuff. I just did a silly uh, mistake there. I am sad I didn't get to see it. I like silly mistakes. They're the best kind. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Just seeing where you're picking up from, um, I, I got an idea of what happened. That was a decent recovery. You know, as far as it, it, what you can do. <laughs> yeah, it, it loses like a 15 seconds at least. Oh, I have a I have a question for you, Toaster. What? A Phoenix has asked me for your opinion on chargeless, sparksless, any percent, or one twenty percent. Which one twenty percent wouldn't work for chargeless? So we'll just go with any percent. Um, I actually still have not done any chargeless mm. categories. I need to. It's, yeah. it's something I've been meaning to do for a long time. Also, eighty dragons. I've still never done an eighty dragons run. Me neither. Me neither. I've done chargeless, but I didn't ever submit. It was like years ago. Before the boards was boards were a thing. I think I had. And I shouldn't say this because I didn't submit it, so no vid, no did. But I think it was like when we were still trying to go for sub one and sparksless any percent. And I might you have got a 59 or chargeless any percent. Yes. Um, I completely did this log wrong. I, I like to try to get all three of the fireworks chests lit with one flame, but... Ooh, but yeah. Ooh. Up. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Should've. Nice. No hesitation on those. Th like, those gems are in a straight line, so I don't know why I thought that was so cool. <laughs> but um, sometimes, even if it's in a straight line, you might just miss one. Um, so anytime you just get a real smooth line where you get all the gems, that's good. It's a good look. Yeah, there are a lot of smooth lines that aren't quite straight, like that line of gems 
on the outside of the hut near Wild Flight. Yep. Uh, where, like, it's a slight curve, but it's really easy to miss, like, one of them. Yep. Actually, that's uh, the one that made me think of this, uh, is it's just, it's really nice when you get them all just how you did. Because, um, yeah, it's easy just to miss one or something, and then your momentum gets set back and all that good stuff. Yeah, Phoenix. <laughs> I'm skept. What did he say? I'm skeptical that an only charge percent would be po possible. Uh, well, it's a uh, it, it's it would be two flame. Um, would be like the per the category because <laughs> you'd have to flame uh, nasty nork twice. Or, yeah, twice. But I think people have tried it. I don't know. I'm All going right. in hard level now. Good old Misty Bog. So. Our all time favorite. It's just knowing, you know, where enemies will possibly or probably be and avoiding danger, but still trying being, to go fast. Being very happens. jumpy about the plants. Yes. Ah, they still, I don't understand how the plants work. I don't. They I've tried to. Tried to get an understanding of why they sometimes attack early. I've never figured it out though. Uh, You're stubborn. <laughs> you are so stubborn. <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> You're like, I'm getting this magic stare. This is you this is one of the easiest magic stairs, I swear. There you go. Um, that was a good example of like if you take a death where Toaster is right now, um, you have to go through that section with the trees again. And if you're not familiar with having to stay over to the right side, you'll just get grabbed by one of the, the trees while they're off screen um, and then take another death. Um, I'm taking something a safety that... dragon here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you looked that tree right in the face and said, <laughs> try it. <laughs> I think there's quite a... No, oh, <laughs> I took that dragon. Uh, nice. Yeah, but it happens. There's quite a bit of debate that could be had about what the hardest level in 120 normally is, but I think in Sparksless, yeah. everyone agrees it's Misty Bog. Yeah, I would say so. I think you can even... like. There might be argument of like, oh, I have more trouble with this one, but I think it's still... Uh, pretty unanimously agreed. I would say so, yeah. Yeah, that the frogs are... They, they just are. Nothing they to just are, yeah. yeah. They really are. So, <laughs> Pander has suggested Shrek percent where you clear all the fairy tale creatures out of the swamp. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, where are the fairy tale creatures? I guess the living trees. Oh, that's fair. He <laughs> just uh, <laughs> get out of my swamp. Dead? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I um. Well, I have to add that. But guys, um, it can be quite dangerous if you are me. <laughs> I do agree, Nova. Um, yeah, if you guys haven't seen um, or paid attention to it, the boars and the beast makers levels, um, they have wings, just little tiny wings for some reason. I guess they just put them on there. You know what category for me to do? I don't run anything right now. <laughs> um, I don't have any guesses. I'm trying to think of something. Oh, that's awful. Ah, uh, yeah, that's too bad. The guards. Hey. Dangerous. 
Oh god. Nope, 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 nope. Oh. Are you talking about ETD 100% Wally? <laughs> I've technically never. I don't have any official representation that I've done that category ever. I don't think. I have no video proof anymore because I. I think I got rid of it or something. It was like I didn't feel right because I was playing on a now banned way of playing it. So yeah. Lucas percent. Lucas percent's a great category. Um, it did more for <laughs> another category than I think anybody can really say. Like it's it's great. Like it changed. It it did its part in influencing the history of Spyro. So it exists. It is valid. I, I just want to call out one more time. I had eight lives earlier and said I'd stop <laughs> collecting more, and I'm down to three. Yeah. Yep. You survived, but at what cost? Um. Yeah, just rough. Yeah. And so let's see how New does here with Guantan. Pressure. Uh. Wait. You. Oh. Okay, there are four frogs who are moving all of the time. Um, if you kill them, the main part is done. Then you can take care of the other frog. Um, take out the guards. Good Don't work. die like I did. And that's one time. Good I don't stuff. Think I actually properly learned the frog patterns in that room until I was running Sparksless and needed to because I kept mining. Yeah, it definitely helps. Um, another issue with Sparksless is if you don't opt to go for the safety option of getting the dragon, like if you're really scared or something, which I would almost argue if you die and then have to recover gems from the dragon uh, that's in Guantan, it's I feel like it's harder <laughs> uh, because yeah. you have to come from above them and you're not, I guess it's difficult. Um, if you die and you're halfway through collecting all the gems all of those frogs come back so if you didn't keep track of which ones are still like still have gems and which ones don't then you're just dealing with that whole issue too oh I'm yeah trying to do... I'm, I'm going for it yeah oh my goodness yeah, it's really cool there boosted is. jump that you can do here yep there you go um, Ooh, Laura launch. It's yeah, Laura launch. It's kind of similar in a way to the 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 way that you do it in this category is not the same, but it's it has sort of similar ways to like a double jump in 120 or not 120 Spyro 2, um, because that oh, supercharged ramp has some interesting properties. Nice. Oh no. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, it has. There's some interesting properties on that supercharged ramp, and I think in all supercharged ramps where it kind of has a little bit of a double jump feel to it. And I think you take advantage of that and then some sort of jank with the edge there and it launches you up. I don't quite understand it. Maybe other people do more, but it's cool. I think we have guesses about why it works, but they're really just guesses. Yeah. And it's it was in a video years and years ago and it was like fairly recently found, basically. Um, and it yeah, saves the video like, was like 2008 or something. 2008 sounds right to me. Yeah. And and uh, uh, and it saves like half a second in main 120. Game just considers it a ramp. Yeah, uh, that's that's my guess is how it works. It's, that's fair. It's basically a scenery jump. Uh, like when you are on the supercharged ramp, you're like in the okay. supercharged state where you can get scenery jumps is okay. my guess. But again, it's not like we've gone into the code to look at it. Yeah, I guess that's that's reasonable. They're all guesses anyway. Yeah. Yeah, right after treetops, there's just an awkward set of five red gems there. Just a cool little tidbit that I just noticed Tosa was doing, and you'll see plenty of runners do it, is um, jumping into portals in a certain way so that um, you're kind of 
almost jumping a little close to parallel. Let's see if you get that. No. Um, uh, close to parallel, and it kind of gives the chance for the camera to be a little closer when you first jump into the portal, and you can get instant loads. That way, instead of having to watch the animation of Spyro jumping into the portal and hanging there for a little bit before it goes to the loading screen. Kind of the opposite of what you would do for Dragon Skip, basically. Good stuff. Was that, I think you got one of the fan chests there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't go to the Vulpix now. Okay. Uh, the two loose green gems up high in Metalhead, uh, those are another couple that I'm just not sure the best way to get. I never yeah. found the. Hey, toaster, I think you missed them. a, I think you missed a chest. Oh, did, oh, heck, you're right. Yeah. Oh no. Completely forgot about that. <clears throat> I think for the um, like platform up there for those high gems, can I get up here? Thank you. I tried to flame charge the first one, then try to get the two um, two gems which are just like sitting there. Mm -hmm. Then flame charge the other two baskets. Uh, That's a good idea. Far behind. It really worked out for me, but. <laughs> Sorry, Phoenix. I, I know because um, New actually missed a gem right at the start, so I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> well, Wally well, helped me. Kinda. True. Yeah. Kinda, but you already had, you know, yeah. exited and have to re enter. So I'll find a way to sabotage it. <laughs> Tell me that I missed a gem at some point when I didn't, and that'll balance <laughs> yeah. it out. I'll just scream really, well, uh, I don't want to mess new up. I was going to say, like, I'll scream really loud when there's, like, a chance for um, you to lose permanent super flame and haunted towers, and it'd be a really big setback, but... It's too much risk. <laughs> yeah. Right here at the end, just um, just an example of a bunch of gems being in one spot, but not a simple line just to take. And also, there's a bit of RNG when it comes to those gems there at the end, because at the end of um, Metalhead, those were all enemies, and then they they all died. And I think they all just had a little bit of gem RNG to where the gem falls for each of those. So this, this is a tough spot for where Toaster is right now um, that you are talking about earlier. There's lots of difficult stuff that's not so difficult and regular. Oh, that's good movement. I like that. That's the best I've ever done that. That was really smooth. <laughs> that was, I mean, you lost no time, basically. <laughs> that was comparable to how some people just do it with sparks. That was very good. And then, you know, jumping in the air, trying to collect as many of those gems as you can as they pop out. But that's one where you can't just collect them all by jumping ahead. Doing a little bit of grinding here. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I like it. Didn't even do a charge jump onto it. Oh, yeah, and Sparksless, you can just run into that gem. I don't know if I've ever knew that. It's cool In though. normal 120 runs, sometimes if the run is bad and I don't care anymore, and I'm on blue sparks, I'll get a fodder and try to time it so I can run onto that gem and also <laughs> have sparks collect the fodder. Oh, that's nice. Uh, nice, nice finish by New on Metalhead, by the way. The gems were just in a great spot. He was able to take pretty straight lines and just knock them out. Good example of uh, of an enemy uh, dying and being in the place of a gem on Toaster's side. Uh, there were three red gems there, and he could have just gotten them all in a straight line. But since that um, Joker, what are they called? <laughs> Jester enemies um, was in the place of one of those red gems. He got bumped out of the way and had to wait for it to disappear first. Uh, I do a weird haunted towers route, by the way. I'm interested I, to see now. <laughs> I think 
Lucy and I are the only ones who do this. Okay. Uh, where... Well, I guess, I guess you'll see in a second, if I, if I get it. I'm disappointed in you. I thought you were gonna get that proxy. Oh no, it's, I don't think that's faster. No, no, Just now that I know the, it's... Uh, the fireworks chest. Yeah, now that I see that you were getting that. But you got the other one, which is cool. Yeah, I got the important one. Yeah, there are, there are a total of three proxies that you can do. Well, you can do more. But there are three wizards that you can proxy off like on your way to go to the supercharge ramp. Two of them are faster and one of them I think is debatable. I think it is ultimately slower, but it, it's kind of cool. Yeah. You can also get the wizard squeeze proxy with this route. Some people will lie and say that it's impossible and they're liars and wrong. Uh, okay, but it's very hard, so I don't go for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Toaster is getting a permanent super flame. So it's just from this fairy. Uh, so he can't die or he will lose it. Uh, but if he doesn't take a hit, then he will keep it throughout the rest of the level, which can allow for a lot of cleanup uh, because there's a ton of strong chests or enemies that can't be destroyed with soup without super flame or super charge. Um, so you need it pretty much throughout the entire level. Um, if you lose it, then you have to pretty much come back or uh, try to manage with other fairies, but it's not super. It's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I I heard uh, once great. I I once heard great John Unsel saying, if you're dying on the towers, the only reason to the only way to maneuver it is reset. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's crazy to think that that um we didn't take as straight of a line like way back. Um, we cleaned up, I can't remember the route so much anymore, but we didn't used to do it this way. Um, and we actually collected a lot more, maybe with like an extra just regular super flame. And, um, thank you, Jumpy. <laughs> Your dreams brought us the, the route that we use today in both categories. We're proving the liars wrong. We proxy as possible on, uh, Darkness. <laughs> Uh, one thing that's dangerous about my route is there's the Nork that chases the first fairy around. It's very possible for that Nork to click through the floor, uh, and I need to die and respawn, oh. uh, respawn it. Which is why almost nobody does this route. I didn't but I know think that. it's cool, and I love it. It doesn't happen that often. It happens maybe like, I don't know, one in five runs. Hmm, that's pretty high <laughs> but it's like guaranteed i don't know 20 seconds time loss sure that's cool i had no idea that that was a thing oh these very good cleanup um just taking care of a lot of the um the ghost armors just really well with those flame charges <clears throat> nice oh, i don't know that one don't know how much faster it is to do it that way, but I like that you did it anyway, going over there from the back. Yeah. I also don't know if it's faster or not. I just like it. Yeah. Cool. Good stuff. Oh, and then <clears throat> the next level is also going to be a fun one. Mm -hmm. um, nice cleanup on those gems there. If anyone is familiar with Spyro 3, OG Spyro 3 runs, you may have seen the zombie glitch before. <laughs> uh, zombie exists in all of the original Spyro games, and it's mostly useless in Spyro 1 and 2. But this is the only place I've found it to be useful in Spyro 1, is Sparksless 120 in Dark Passage. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, yeah. Um, basically, you can trigger Zombie by dying the same time you free a dragon. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bait this Cupid to shoot towards the dragon and get the arrow to hit me. There we go, that got it. 
Nice. So That's nice. there there are a bunch of effects of zombie. First of all, I can't take damage. Which is the main reason I'm doing it, because this is if I wasn't doing zombie, this might be the hardest level. It'd probably still be Misty, but this would be a close second. Yeah, um, I, if I wanted to give my two cents, this has, there's, it's probably more difficult to execute this one, but there's a level of randomness to Misty Bog uh, that makes it probably harder. Yeah, I, I agree with that entirely. Um other effects of zombie I cannot pause the game <laughs> um, if I fall into water the game is soft locked if I charge off a cliff and don't have a glide to use uh, the game is soft locked um, this is I mean this Aww. is sparksless anyway but you'll notice sparks isn't even trying to appear the butterflies if your zombie normally uh you just don't collect butterflies. Yeah. So... Oh, and another thing is, if you're zombied, you can talk to balloonists and go to other homeworlds, but you can't enter any level portals. That's the other big mm -hmm. one. So we do need to lose zombie at some point. And yep. the way we do that is by voiding out, uh, which I'm going to do after collecting the fourth dragon. Yep which you'll see in a minute here. So Croc said, uh, this category has been done deathless at least once, right? I don't know. I mean, as far as like intentional or unintentional deaths, have you done that, Toaster? I don't I'm know, sure. but I doubt it. Yeah. Um, there, I don't think there's been anybody that's made an, like an appropriate attempt to try and do this deathless or at least without un unintentional deaths. Um, so... I think that title still uh, could be taken by somebody. If any of my runs were deathless, it would have been my current PB. Uh, oh, so to void out, we just jump off this cliff and don't charge. And after a few seconds, it'll respawn us. And then the rest of the level, we're not zombied. No. Uh, but the rest of the level is not very hard. So. Ooh. Hey, everybody from Deo's raid. Uh, you were catching... Deo. A very, very, very cool category. So, um, strap in. This is 120%, which I know probably all of you guys are familiar with, but with the small little itty bitty tiny difference that we don't have sparks the entire run. Uh, we take damage and we die instantly. There's no getting sparks at any point, and we have to collect all the gems manually. So it's a basically just a scary version of 120%. There's a couple differences that are really cool. Actually, this is the level that has the biggest difference. Um, and unfortunately, you guys didn't get to see most of that. Um, but still very, very cool category. And Deo is saying that he's going to get world record in this one day. I believe I encourage you to try it. I really want people to do this more if they can. It's a it's a bit of a barrier of entry because you have to. Well, you can do it oh, on an emulator. emulator. I just, yeah, I was just thinking. <laughs> hey, you can do this on emulator, so it's not too hard, but it does require a little bit of setup. But tons of people uh, would be willing to help you get started. It's good stuff. Yeah. Uh. That was an interesting <laughs> fall. Yeah. It was a mistake. Uh. No comment on that one. <laughs> you were just getting you were just getting rid of uh, of uh, um, zombie, right? Or did um, you already get rid of it? Yes, I, I totally remember that. Not not like in the last very in the very last moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't distracted. No, no, no. You just wanted to do a cool little bounce for your zombie. Uh, yeah, this is a cool cool trick for Dale. And that one was for you, Deo. If you missed it, then we're very disappointed. And Indeed. knowing you, you probably didn't see it. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Okay. I thought it was. All right. Ozzy still. Hey. 
<laughs> He's throwing you for a loop. I'm just curious to see what you do here. If you just wait it out. Yeah, I think it's... Oh, oh nice save. <laughs> no way. <laughs> really happy you could make that glide. I didn't yeah. know that. So that's what you end up doing when you're waiting out that fireworks chest. <laughs> really, really weird decision on Toaster's part there. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird island there where New is at. Um, just a couple stray gems. And then you have the risk of, of slightly missing one of those enemies. They have big hitboxes yeah. when they try to smack you, so you have to be a little careful there. If he just gets smushed. And then you're set back to the start of the level. So don't want to do that if you can avoid it, especially when there's always the chance of like doing something like that. <laughs> so that's something that uh, that definitely is more prevalent in Sparks list compared to 120 percent is you can get confident, you can get a little cocky and try to just do fast movement off of an edge, but then that gem that you were going to grab on the way off, you forgot it, so you have to go back. Indeed. Got it happens to all of us. Got punished for my lack of concentration. I didn't see any flora flops, so that's too, that's too bad. <laughs> yep. I haven't Did actually you? tried to do it myself, but I it's a cool strap. Either. I mean, I, I understand mechanically just how it works. But, uh, yeah, I just haven't actually gotten it or done it. Oh, dude, that was... <laughs> Your guys' um, fly into Lofty and Icy were in sync perfectly. <laughs> Ooh, I got some gems really cleanly there. Whew. Wait a second. You, I thought you missed a gem there. That was amazing. I'm not trying to sabotage, I promise. I just literally, <laughs> I thought you missed a gem when you did that, but it was just that clean. I'm not positive I got all the gems, but okay. luckily it's right near the, uh, where yeah. the level ones anyway, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm interested to see where this is going. Well, Lofty, it's kind of like in 120, everyone has a different route for it. Yeah, yeah I don't know this route. This is but... really similar to the superchargeless lofty oh. route I do in normal 120, except I don't do the damage boost. I supercharge at the end to get to the fireworks chest. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Oh no. Oh god. Oh. These turkeys are terrifying, sparksless. If you miss yeah. a flame, it's really hard to uh, handle them. They'll spin around you and give you the slip and then come in behind you. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think I think Lofty was one of the levels that when I was just picking up this category, I didn't do any strict routing. I just kind of did a few runs and, and made adjustments to the main general routes as I saw fit. Lofty was one where I felt like I was due for a proper reroute to suit the needs of Sparksless more, but I just never did. So I'm glad that you guys have done that at least a little bit more than I did. I'm also really happy that this category exists in the way that it does now, because when I first came into the or came into the community, um, I think it was like around 2013 or 2014. Um, there is a runner named Dox, and he ran this category, quote unquote, by just taking enough damage to lose sparks, and then he would have to, um, if he died and got sparks back, he would have to take damage again. And at that whole time, he'd run a risk and probably pick up a gem or two because he was trying to die, but he'd accidentally pick up a gem with sparks. Full thing. So it's really cool to see it exist uh, purely as a sparks list category, which is really cool. Yeah, uh, Gasco actually came into my chat a couple of weeks ago and was Ooh. talking. Apparently, he also tried that a couple of times and thought it was cool to Ye see this yeah. in the way it does now. I think, yeah, I think that does ring a bell that he um, at least tried it or mentioned that he had tried it. Um, yeah, it was always something that like would come up randomly. People would like to kind of talk about it. And it, it, in concept, it 
very clearly, you know, sounds like a cool idea, but uh, we just didn't um, do any RAM editing or anything like that to actually achieve what we wanted to until now. Uh, another thing I want to point out real quick. Oh, my goodness. This happened maybe a month oh, no. ago now, but uh, there was a fodder who got in my way uh, for a gem. And it's hilarious the relationship you end up with with fodder in this category. <laughs> Frequently, you'll attack them just to get them out of the way because they get in your way so often. Yeah. yeah. Yep. They're like our only negative negative points to fodder now. Yep. Like they and they're annoying. <laughs> this category. There are some fodder that actually have a death animation where their hitbox still exists. And they are a problem in regular 120, but in this category, it's just way more. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, they can't all be like the sheep that just pop instantly as soon as you kill them. Be nice, but they're not like all like that. I'm going to consciously not crash the game right here. <laughs> Wait, so I shouldn't go for... Maybe she oh, is going to be disappointed. Bunch. Damn. Yeah, yeah, I guess don't. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Unless I'm forgetting anything for Jacques, I don't think it's... Well, I guess there, there's a little bit of difficulty in making a cycle. And, but yeah. as far as like enemies go and, and general stuff, it's not too much harder than just the regular old jock. Yeah, I get yeah. those loose red gems at the start That's of the a level good idea. to make the just everything easier. Yeah. As well as all of the things here, which I, I don't normally uh That's a smart decision. That platform. Yeah. And I'd say like for the most part, a lot of the enemies in this level, um, you either are they're either pretty easy to avoid or if you do take damage for them from them in regular you're probably just going to fall off an edge right after anyway like the big trouble ones um so usually that the enemies aren't too much of an issue here it's just yeah. big thing is that cycle uh, the it's... locked chest in jock is actually an interesting one in my opinion. There's one blue gem that comes up late and pops up oh, in a yeah. different direction than all the others. And so you gotta like consciously wait for it and then catch that one in particular and get the rest. That's a good point. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. That's, that yeah. sucks. I think that was just a bit of a... I don't know. I, I got excited. Yeah. <laughs> just a bit of that. Don't do it again, though. Yeah, okay. It was in a spot where I was, like, afraid that you were going to just be like, okay, I'll just charge straight and grab it, and then the, the box that's right beside it would have a hitbox that would extend and push you out of the way. But that didn't happen, thankfully. Uh, I was going to ask, I didn't see... I assume you went for just regular cake... Uh, yeah, uh -oh. I, I, I always do. Oh, no. Oh, I hate oh, when that happens now. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's that's too bad. But you can... They're probably just going to adjust your route a little bit. Oh, okay, you're just going to keep going that way. That works. I could have gone for a reroute, that's true, but... Yeah. Not too sure if, like... I don't uh... want to throw you off too much. Yeah, that, that's like the problem with reroutes. You have to attack enemies like from a different angle, and it can make it a bit difficult. Yeah. Yeah, and um, going into a path or route that you're not familiar with in this category is very risky. Because yeah, you could just take a take a death because you're not used to uh, your hands doing like your muscle memory's not you're not working on that anymore. You're just mo focusing on like your movement tech and all that. So. No wall glide? What?
I'm surprised I got all of the uh, loose gems near the end of shock. Those can be hard to get. Mm, mm hmm. Well, you are at eight, eight lives right now. Back up to eight. We'll see how North Cove goes. Yeah. Yeah, lots of uh, things just flying around and exploding in, in Cove with big hitboxes. So um, we'll see. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> It indeed was close. Yeah, but you made it good. Tang good, good, good. That's Tang the important part. Yeah, Tang there would have been... <clears throat> would have been quite an optimal, I'd say. Having to do all the way back to uh, the beginning of the level from the dragon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Are these... Over interesting. Because uh, you can collect their gems by like pushing into their body, <laughs> so you kind of want to nice collection them there. Well, they're not holding a barrel. Yep. Yeah, I was actually going to mention that same thing. Uh, they're really just interesting and really help speed up this level a lot. Um. Yeah, you had some good uh, gem collection over by the first TNT in that strong chest. Oh, yeah. Because actually, you're having that entire section was very clean. Ah. Good stuff. <laughs> Blue gem, no. <laughs> it's you always for it. It's always just the one guy just hanging out. Oh, this it's, is it's... another damage thing we can't do, uh, TM3. Mm -hmm. I wish there was... I don't even know if it would be possible. I never tried. If you can... Because you know you can sometimes swipe like a TNT or something but not take damage from it. But it's like really tight. I don't yeah. know if it would work though. I doubt it. Yeah, with the like extended explosion radius that yeah. the trick relies on. I don't know. That's a good point. Yeah. It probably wouldn't work at all. I think it's funny when there's just a single gem there that's just sitting and speedrunners struggle so hard to just grab that single gem here <laughs> because we're trying to grab it real fast and move on. But we just keep bouncing right beside it this like thing five times in a row. <laughs> in the event, it, it just adds to the stress. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Like, if you're playing casually, you would just, like, you know, stop, walk over to it, grab it, and move on. We're just like, we got charging them, and then we gotta jump, and then we gotta. Get it with as fast as possible. Yes. There's a pretty precise barrel bonk you can do to uh, get one of the barrels to hit all four of these guys, but uh, it's, yeah. it's hard. Yeah, I. I hadn't seen, like, the angle that you were going for. Um, before I don't, I mean, I've, you didn't get it, but um, yeah, it is kind of nice, uh, but it's more just a safety thing. If you are confident enough, you could um, go for the actual regular strat yeah. or um, or do what you did there, which is perfectly viable too. Good stuff there, yeah. Oh, <laughs> spoke to Zoom. Okay, good. I got all the gems. Yeah. Got the 352. Yeah. I'm always a little worried in this level until I see the 352. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're playing with fire when you flame those TNT there, no. <laughs> I like it dangerous. Yep. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a bit of an issue. So if you saw a news end, he had to flame those TNT. If you uh, kill that that Nork um, while he's holding TNT, he'll die, and then the TNT will be where the gem is, and there's no way to collect it by just walking into it or anything. So you have to flame it. Yeah, since I'm basically doing two rounds on this black circle, 
or like crack to the um strong chest i could have just flamed the tnt and just charged right off mm -hmm. just a bit of a split second decision like yeah it's, what you did was also completely you know reasonable in that case i really like how you can take that oh. uh that corner um, to get those two greens and that blue right in, um, right where you were just at in Twilight Harbor. Because uh, oh, if you yeah. basically just hold the angle, you can get them all. One of those cases of just like knowing that you can do something and then just doing it is so much easier compared to like when you're first learning. Um, because you don't know that you can just hold that angle just fine. And did you get all this uh, from the TNT on the stairs? Because that was pretty smooth, if so. I think I did. I didn't hear a gun dropping down. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't see anything up there. So we'll just have to keep an eye on the gem count. But I think you actually got them, which is great. Yeah. You played it risky and it was it paid off. That was good, too. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> when it comes to gem collection. <laughs> It's like Sparks is doing the waltz with these gems here. <laughs> yep, you got them. Having a quick dance. Yo. So if you guys are familiar with regular 120, usually there's a lot of uh, live management throughout the entire run so that you are at zero lives by the time you do the last death abuse. Um, in this category, we don't have to do that because we can't do credit skip in the way that we would. Well, we can technically do credit skip, but that's a whole thing. Um, but we can't do it the way that we would do it in 120 because you have to take damage before you can do the proxy to get up in the air and do all the good stuff that lets credit skip actually happen. Um, yeah, so the there's no reason. A whole other kind of life management. Yes, yeah, on the other side, it's like deciding how many extra lives do you want to spend time picking up in this category. Um, so, you know, in a perfect scenario, yeah, you would probably end this one in zero lives as well. Um, or whatever lives you would end up by not collecting any. Or, you, you know what I mean. Um, you would just manage it that way. Um, but that's just not practical. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> so I'm gonna go in a nasty Nork here. This is a fun level. I, I like nasty and sparksless. Yeah, I was the first couple times I ran this category, I was really nervous going into it, but then I realized, oh, it's actually not too bad, and it's just a little bit of you know, it's a little scary, just as just enough to be an exciting level. Yeah. Like, there's a bunch of loose gems, which are usually worrisome and sparksless, but they're mostly in straight lines. Mm -hmm. So it's it's more fun than it, than difficult. Yeah. It, it still punishes you when you are not paying attention, but mm -hmm. it's the way yeah. you, know, you have to pay attention, but it's not um, painfully difficult. Yeah. Yep. Especially since you have to since you so want cool. to get there one cycle. I just I, I love how like these there's like three red gems and you can use them in like a certain angle that basically gets you where you're wanting to go if you just plan your routes accordingly. Like the stuff that you're doing right now is really cool, Toaster. Yeah, the movement in this is just mm -hmm. so much fun when you start getting it down. Yeah. It, it really is. You got the 248, so you're good on gems. I, I think Sparksless is a really fun category to run and play, and it's a completely miserable category to grind. Just because yeah, of how many places yeah. it's easy to lose, like, one minute right there. Yeah, I wouldn't I, uh, I, love doing a huge grind of it. But learning it and playing it was great. Yeah, at first I was just like doing a spark to run out of fun to get a break mm. from Vortex and 120. Mm -hmm. Then I found out that it was pretty fun to do it. Yeah. Um, 
but as I kept grinding, it was just. Sorry, I took so long. Kind of oh lord, it was it was pretty <laughs> painful sometimes to just use <laughs> runs like That's very unused uh, unused ways. Well, yeah, speedrunners sort of dilemma. It's like <laughs> eventually it will get itself to the point where it can be a frustrating grind if you allow it. So we're gonna watch credits with Toaster. Um, there, technically, this is there. There is a way to do credit skip. Um, Toaster's not going to do it, and I, I uh, value that he is choosing not to do it. Um, you could uh, basically open up the disc tray and uh, open it like right where it is right now um, in this credits sequence, and it would eventually realize that like. Uh, the disc's not spinning anymore or whatever, and it would just send you back to the main screen early. Um, and it would skip about two minutes of credits as opposed to having to wait those out. Um, so, and Poster would probably agree with me on this, you can do it in this category, and you could also run this category with fast disk speed to get the better loads. You could get a world record by utilizing those things uh, which he is not utilized in his world record. The only recommendation is that maybe you get a thirty, a one thirty-five. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my thing. I I don't have a problem with anybody doing poverty credit skip. I'm fine with yeah. it. I just don't want to do it myself because I don't do it in normal one twenty. And I wanted my sparksless run to be as comparable to normal one twenty as I could get it. Yep. Um. So yeah, just try to get a one thirty-five before you beat me is my only my only request. <laughs> Keep the grind up and and just get it because it would it would be really cool to see i will i won't i won't lie but uh, but yeah so if you look at the leaderboards and you see um i think i have like a lowish or mid 140 i think it's a 140 you, 23 140 23 sure um and then you have a 139 flat yeah um if you see those and you're like hey those are pretty close no <laughs> toaster has done some good work in this in this category and they're actually uh, about five or so minutes apart. So very, very, very skillful. I don't even know, like, how does that compare to your regular 120? A normal 120 PB is a 132.38, I think. Oh, you could be. And it was, it was really good for my skill level. It was, yeah. I think, less than three minutes off my sum of best. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I think a run of that quality in Sparksless for me would be like a high 137. Mm. So by very accurate scientific measurements, Spark saves you five minutes in this game. <laughs> yeah. Um, compared to me, my PB in 120 is a 134, 545. Mm -hmm. My Sparks PB is a 144, 48. Um, mm. 10 minutes of difference, and I'd say it's kind of accurate. For me, at least. Yeah. Um, I haven't put as much work into this category as Toaster has. Um, mm -hmm. But I can also say that I've got recent uh, PBs in 120 and Sparks this. So. Oh, that was a nice attempt at Magic Stairs there. I will I say... The magic stairs. Yeah, they're really cool. I will say, if you are somebody that runs 120 and you have, you know, you, you're willing to set up this scenario to do sparksless it's a nice way to get a break and actually hone some of your just general sort of i want to say i want to call them like problem solving skills with spyro because uh, there's a lot of just little movement things that you really get a lot better with when you're running this category it's not going to save everything because you're tweaking your movement a little bit compared to what you would do normally but you are learning how to handle these weird situations a little bit better when you're under more restrictions. So it's just a nice way to break things up. Highly recommend trying it. What I can say about the movement is you learn to be more precise since you mm -hmm. have to aim for all those um, gems, collecting them manually. Yep. Uh, you also learn to take things a little more laid back maybe in terms of how you confront enemies since you have to basically do it otherwise you just lose a life and yeah. lose a big amount of time and as toaster mentioned um sometimes it's a good opportunity because you're kind of forced to you learn more about the enemy patterns 
and you can take that into yeah. regular 120 or any percent or whatever you end up doing um so it's a lot of fun and it's not super explored yet but these guys have done a wonderful job and not that there's like a ton to really explore it's more of just a fun challenge um but yeah really cool the differences are subtle but they are there and once you once you play it yourself you just notice them even more mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always it's it kind of goes in line with something that I've always wanted in Spyro One, or really any of the Spyro games. It's just like sort of ROM hacks. Um, obviously, I would like like a proper one where you'd have to do crazy platforming and stuff. But this kind of scratches yeah. that itch, where you're like you're you're implementing a challenge that isn't normally there. Um, so it gets a little close to what I want. But what I really want would be like custom levels. That'd be so cool. <laughs> Yeah, I've yeah. noticed in, in Crash 2, or like in Crash levels, there are a few models who are able to make custom levels. Mm -hmm. I know it's totally different in Spyro. Um, yeah. We're about to finish on Toaster's close End. To, close to impossible, but it's been really cool for it. And time for Toaster. GG's. GG's indeed. Holy this moly. It's a close race. You've defeated Ganasty yeah. Yes. Collected the I did not realize <laughs> that um, black screen is very long on SDS. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> I just think, did it crash? What happens? <laughs> cool. That was that was really good. I didn't see what the time was. It says. Oh, I think it was like a 142.30 ish. That would be in line with uh, SDS timing. Yeah. Yeah, Phoenix has 143.03 RTA, so that would um, that would add up pretty close. Which that's, that's a really good run for me. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a testament to your consistency. And both of you guys, you guys are both in loot at the same time. Loot's like, I don't even know, three and a half minutes. I don't know how long it is in this category. Yeah, three to four minutes. minutes. Three, three to four. Um, so it was close. And actually, um, considering what your current PB is, uh, new, this is very good. Um, I, I think it will be my second best run, but it won't be at all. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably, that sounds about right. So just great effort on both you guys. There wasn't a single, there was deaths, of course, but there wasn't a single like spiral out of control where you take like three, four deaths in the same spot. Uh, it's just those problem levels, unless I'm missing or forgetting one. Um, you guys handled um, tough situations very well. With the setting of uh, being like in pressure where you have to focus, mm -hmm. especially on the marathon run. <laughs> yeah, Phoenix, I, I realized as I said it, it probably does sound like I'm saying spiraling out of control. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> there's there's a completely unrelated thing, and I probably shouldn't say this while news finishing, but um, there's a Tool song called Lateralis, and some of the lyrics in there, and I'm here, news finishing, yeah, now, but he finished like three seconds before I said that because I'm delayed. <laughs> there's there's a Tool song that um the, there's lyrics at one point that say spiral out. And I keep, it, it, when I was younger, I would think that it said Spyro No. <laughs> and I was like, Spyro. oh, oh tool, tool plays Spyro? Spyro No. All right. Well, GG's new and toaster. Uh, we have yet another super close race. I don't know if this is just like a marathon thing where it constantly, we get these really tight races. Um, but good job to both of you. Super hype time. You guys have any shout outs you want to make before we uh, head on to our next run? Uh, I want to. community? Yeah. I want to shout out Hum in particular for yes, being the first one to put any serious effort into this category. I had only done one or two runs and then 
one month hum showed up and was like, hey, I'm getting times in like the 140s. <laughs> so I, I definitely would not have pushed this the way I did, I think, if hum hadn't uh, gone at it first. Thanks. Um, yeah, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, this this category was fair. I would say it was fairly dormant um, until like the start of this year. And yeah, I saw an opportunity, tried it a couple times and just had a blast just uh, getting the time lower and lower. Like I said, just trying to bop as many times as I could on the main leaderboards. Um, and I'm really happy to see that a couple others have gone in there, gotten some 140s, gotten a 130. Um, that's exactly what I wanted to see in any of these uh, really cool miscellaneous categories. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to see that uh, my efforts went to something. It's cool. I also wanted to give a shout out for Ham and Toaster for inspiring me to actually run this category and put Let's some go. effort into it. <laughs> like I saw Ham awesome. doing, uh, doing some Sparks' runs earlier this year when he was really the first one who was seriously putting effort into this um, and then Toaster picked it up and decided to get world record um, and you two guys inspired me to run this category make this race happen it's awesome and it's really cool um, because I feel like that's like really what miscellaneous categories are at like the heart is like one person is just like here's a silly idea what if we did this game while removing one of the main concepts of it. And then someone else is just like, well, if he's going to do it, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And someone else is like, well, if they're doing it, I'm going to do it. And now it's like, there's a decent amount of, I, uh, how many runners do we currently have on the board for this? Is it five or six? I think um, seven. And then there are a couple of yeah. people who haven't submitted. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I think that's really cool. Very, very, I definitely agree with that. I think that's all, right. all I've got. Yeah. Good yeah. race, guys. Same. All right. Well, thank you again. We're going to head to a quick break. And then I believe up next we have Spyro 3 Bone Dance by Absent. So stick to stay tuned for that. And we'll catch you all later. Thanks again to the runners and Hump for commentating. Best look, Absent. <laughs>